It's warm-up time. The games are slowly creeping up on Yankee home run slugger Roger Maris. Maris hit number 57 yesterday against the Tigers in his bid to top Babe Ruth's mark of 60. But Maris has only four games to tie or break the record number under the 134-game schedule set down by baseball commissioner Ford Fred. The Yankees play a single game in Detroit today, then move on to Baltimore for a three-game series. Teammate Mickey Mantle has 53 homers and needs seven to tie and need to break the 1927 record that has lasted so long. Twenty years ago today, a young batter stepped to the uh, plate at, San, at St. Louis rather, and uh, sacked a double for his first major league hit. In Pittsburgh today, that same player will be honored by players, fans, and National League officials before the card of Pirate game. Stan Musial, now 40 years old, will be observing his 20th season in the major leagues. Musial has been getting hits, plenty of them, ever since that first double. He has been National League batting champion seven times and has a lifetime home run mark of 442. Second only to the late Mallott, who hit 511. The home run chase attracted the uh, most attention, but the Yankees were slowly inching toward another American League pennant. At a week's end, the Yankees had a nine and one half game lead over the second place Detroit. Cincinnati moved four and a half games ahead of the National League chase, and the Reds back rather racked up five in a row this past week, while the second place Los Angeles Dodgers lost five out of their last eight games to slip behind. The New York Cincinnati World Series would be the first between the two clubs since 1941. Stand by for the Yankee game over the home of Yankees, WOKO. Warm up time was brought to you by Nationwide Insurance of Columbus, Ohio. It's Yankee baseball time again. This afternoon's game, the New York Yankees and the Detroit Tigers from Tiger Stadium in Detroit, brought to you by P. Ballantyne and Sons, brewers of the crisp refresher Ballantyne beer. Enjoy sunny, mellow Ballantyne beer along with baseball. And for the 26th consecutive year, by Major League Baseball's largest continuous radio and television sponsor, the Atlantic Refining Company and your Atlantic dealers. Hello, everybody. This is Bob Delaney. And in just a couple of moments, we'll be joining Phil Rizzuto and Mel Allen with a play-by-play -play account of this, the final game of the four-game set between the New York Yankees and the Detroit Tigers. Jim Bunning going for the Tigers today. And for the New York Yankees, it'll be Bill Stafford. The Yankees move on to Baltimore after an opening open date tomorrow. Here's the lineup with Phil. <laughs> Tony Kubek batting second, playing shortstop. In right field batting third, Roger Maris. Maris, who hit his 57th home of the year yesterday, needing only three more to tie Ruth and four to break his record. Mickey Mantle will be in center field, batting cleanup. In left field, batting fifth, Yogi Berra. Doing the catching, and the batting sixth today will be Johnny Blanchard. Bill Skarin at first base, batting seventh. Cleve Boyer, batting eighth, playing third base, and doing the pitching and batting ninth, Bill Stafford. For the Tigers, Dick McCullough leads off at shortstop. In center field, batting second, Billy Bruton. Al Kaline in right field, batting third. Rocky Calavito will be hitting in a cleanup spot, playing left field. At first base, batting fifth, Norm Cash. D. Boros at third base, batting sixth. Doing the catching, batting seventh, Dick Brown. Jake Wood will be the second baseman, batting eighth. And doing the pitching and batting ninth, Jim Bunning. Jim Bunning going out to the mound. Steps right on the third base foul line. So Bunning has a superstition. That could be it. Almost all players, ball players have one or another. Right now, our national anthem.
the mound for Detroit, Jim Bunny. 116 and lost 11 against the Yankees. He's 0-1 this year. And last time against New York, seven wins, eight defeats. Bunning's last appearance on the mound was a five-hit, eight-nothing shutout over Kansas City back on September 13th. That was his fourth shutout of the year. And it ties him with Frank Larry for the most shutouts on the Tigers. This will be Bunning's 36th appearance of the year, his 35th start, and his third appearance against the Yankees. Going down to third base, Frank Crescetti. Coaching at first, Wally Moses. The umpires, calling balls and strikes, John Stevens. At first base, Larry Knapp. At second base, Hank Storr, and over at third, Nestor Shalak. Bobby Richardson, who's been doing a fine job as leadoff man for the Yankees this year, batting 270, has 17 doubles, four triples, three homers, 48 RBIs. Another good crowd on hand. Tigers, by taking two of the first three off the Yankees, have kept the Yankees from crunching the pennant here in Detroit, at least. The wind up by Bunning. He kicks, delivers. It's bunted foul to the left of the plate. The Yankees will leave for Baltimore on Monday. Tomorrow is an off day. Bunning ready again. His curve is bunted out again and fouled in back of the plate. So Bobby tried two successive punts and fouled both of them off. On Tuesday in Baltimore, there'll be a twi-night doubleheader. And we'll be on the air at 5.55 p.m. Wednesday and Thursday, regular night games will be on the air at 7.55 p.m. Don't forget the twi-nighter, Tuesday night. Five, right, nothing and two on Richardson. Here's the windup. Pitch is bonded with two strikes on him, and he's going to have a base hit. How do you like that? Bobby Richardson determined to lay down a bunt, fouled the first two off, and then punted with two strikes on him. Bunning charging in, had the ball go right by him, and it stopped before it got to the shortstop, and Richardson's on with a base hit. Talk about determination. That brings up Tony Kubek. Tony batting 279, 38 doubles, 6 triples, 7 homers, 44 runs batted in. And Kubek has gotten good wood on the ball here in this series. Doesn't have near as many hits as he could have had with a little luck. The pitch to Kubek, hit high in the air to straightaway center field. Billy Bruton flips the glasses down, shading his eyes under it, and makes the catch. Even with the glasses down, Bruton had to shade his eyes with his gloves. And that brings up Roger Maris. Roger batting 271, 16 doubles, 3 triples, 57 homers, 135 RBI. Harris with just four games left in which to tie or better Babe Ruth's record 60 homers set in 1927. Richardson leading off first. The pitch to Maris. Low outside, ball one. A stretch and the slow curve inside, ball two. Two and nothing. Elston Howard not playing today, but Ellie's home run yesterday which gave him 20, gave the Yankees a new record for a number of men on a team to hit 20 or more homers during one season, and now the Yankees have six. Here's a stretch. Two-nothing pitch, change up, outside, ball three, three-nothing. Six men on Maris with 57, Mantle with 53, Barrow with 20, Blanchard with 20, Scarron with 25, and Howard with 20. Here's a stretch. The ball is outside, ball four. So Maris walks, and it brings up Mickey Mantle. Mickey batting 321, 16 doubles, 6 triples, 53 homers, 125 runs batted in. This is a perfect park for a long ball hitter, especially a left-hand hitter. 325 down the line, and then it doesn't go out too sharply, where in deep right center it's only 370. Pitch to Mickey. Ball's hit on the ground. Backhanded by Jake Ward. Throws to the shortstop. And they had an easy double play. McCullough did not throw the ball. Mantle had stopped halfway down and then just jogged in the first base. But McCullough, thinking Mickey was running hard, did not throw the ball. And they missed their chance for the double play. But Jake Wood makes a fine backhand stop, taking a base hit away from Mickey and turning it into a fourth play. When McCullough finally decided to attempt a throw, that's just when Maris slid into him and just knocked him off balance, he couldn't get rid of the ball. 
So now there are runners at first and third with two out, and here's Yogi Berra. Stretch. Pitch to Yogi. High foul. Going near the box seat, and it's back out of play in the upper deck. Strike one on Yogi. Mantle leading off first, Richardson off third. Here's a stretch. Curve to Yogi is high, one on one. Running, ready again. Fastball, full foul down the first baseline, bouncing off the wall. Right down the bench by the Yankee bullpen. The uh, Yankee bullpen brigade is not down there as yet. One ball, two strikes on Yogi. On deck, Johnny Blanchard. Here's a stretch by Bunny. Here it is, and Yogi takes it, strike three called, and Yogi's arguing with John Stevens. And for the Yankees in the top of the first, no run, one hit, no Tiger errors, two men left at the end of one half inning. The Yankees nothing, and the Tigers coming to that. Bill Stafford, he's 113, lost seven. Against Detroit, he's 0-2. His lifetime record against Detroit, one win, two defeats. The Yankees have won the last four games in which Stafford has started. Stafford won three of the games, and Arroyo winning the other in relief. Bill has pitched three complete games out of his last four. One was a shutout, and he's allowed only three earned runs in the last 34 innings. And that's an earned run average of 0.79. Stafford, by the way, has the lowest earned run average among the Yankee regular starters with a 2.449 mark. And tied with Whitey Ford for the most shutouts on the club with three. Dick McCullough, Tiger shortstop leading off, batting 257. 12 doubles, three triples, five homers, 31 RBI. Coaching at third, Bill Cavaretta at first, Don Hefner. Here's the windup in the first pitch by Stafford. It's a ground ball through the middle of base hit. Boy, McAuliffe with that little short swing sent a bullet right through the middle. So, both leadoff men start off the ball game with a base hit. Richardson with a bunt, McAuliffe with a line single to center. And it brings up Billy Bruce. Uh, I said it right today, Joe. Billy Bruce. Bruton batting 255, 10 doubles, 5 triples, 17 homers, and 58 RBIs. Here's the stretch. The pitch to Bruton. He pops it up to Cleet Boyer at third base. Cleet right near the bag. Makes the catch about a foot away from third base. That's one away, and here is Al Kaline. Perfect day yesterday, four for four, a double and three singles and a sacrifice fly. He's batting 323, has 37 doubles, five triples, 18 homers, 75 RBI. In this series so far, he has seven hits and ten at bats. There's a foul back strike one. Since September the 1st, though, which including the last series at New York, K-line is 13 for 20. Oh, man. He has been feasting on Yankee pitching. All right, Stafford set. His pitch is popped in the air. Cleet Boyer coming in again in fair territory. Takes it for the second out. So they finally got K-Line out of there, and here's Rocky Colavito. Oh, we're happy to hear that Yankee, rather, uh, Rocky, has won the support of the fans when he first came here from Cleveland. They were on him. Most of last year, as a matter of fact. But with a fine year he's having, there and back from now, he's batting 287. Here's a stretch by Stafford. The pitch to Rocky. A line drive base hit to right field. Call up is... Oh, he holds it second. He rounded second and started, then held up. Yesterday, he went on a single like that in the first inning. And now it's a throw. Had him by about 10 feet, but the ball grazed off his helmet, allowing him to score. And it brings up Norm Cash with runners at first and second and two outs. Talk about a year this Cash is having one. He's batting 359, 22 doubles, 8 triples, 37 homers, and 122 runs batted in. No score on the bottom of the first. McCall of second. Alavito at first. Stafford set. Change up. Hit through the middle. A base hit. Here comes McCall. He'll score. Alavito's going to strike for third. Here's Maddow's throw. 
And it hit Palomino just as yesterday when Maris's throw hit McAuliffe. He'd have been a dead duck, but the ball hit Rocky as he started a slide. So it's a single for Cash and RBI. No error on the play. And the Tigers take a one nothing lead here in the bottom of the first. Cash hit a low change of pace right back through the middle. For Cash's 123rd run batted in. That'll put him over the 360 mark. All right, here's Steve Boros with runners at first and third. Curve is over, strike one call. Boros batting 272. Has 15 doubles, two triples, five homers, 60 runs batted in. Right-hand hitter got off to a great start. Broke his collarbone, slowed him up quite a bit. Curve low and away, one and one. On deck, Dick Brown. Tigers had 17 base hits yesterday. They've got three already here in the first inning. The stretch, pitch, inside, ball two, two and one. Tap it, stretches. Curve, inside, ball three. Three and one. And Ralph Hawk wants somebody to get ready down in the bullpen. Elton Howard is running down with the catcher's glove. And let's see who's getting up. Looks like Hal Renniff. That's who it is. Hal Renniff gets up quickly in the Yankee bullpen. Now the 3-1 pitch. Low and away, ball four, and the bases are loaded. First walk given up by Stafford. Blanchard asks for time, goes out to the mound to talk with Stafford, while Dick Brown takes off his catching gear. And will be coming up there. Brown batting 270. Has 10 doubles, 2 triples, 15 homers, 43 runs batted in. Brown was also going great gun for the Tigers. And then broke a finger and was sidelined for well over a month. So Detroit did very well. Well, they had two of their key men out of there. Brown and Boros. All right, the bases are loaded. Tigers lead 1-0. There are two out here in the bottom of the first. On deck is Jake Wood. Here's the windup by Stafford. Curve hit high in the air to left field. Yogi's back there, though, in front of the auxiliary scoreboard, takes it for the out. And if Brown had got a little more wood on that one, not too much more, it'd have been a grand slammer. So Detroit comes up with one run on three base hits. No Yankee errors. Three men left, and at the end of one full inning, it's Detroit one and the Yankees nothing. All right now we'll pause for station identification. Good sound broadcasting for 1961. This is Quality Modern, WOKO in Albany, New York, where you always hear the very best of everything. The time, five minutes before 3 p.m. Here's Johnny Blanchett leading off for the Yankees. Johnny swings and grounds one foul past Wally Moses, strike one. Blanchett batting 313, eight doubles, one triple, 20 homers, 49 RBIs. Like Louis Arroyo came up with another foul ball in the bullpen. Louis likes to chase them down. Curve popped in the short right field. K line coming in. Under it. He's got it. One away. Brings up Bill Scarra. The Moose batting 269. 23 doubles, 3 triples, 25 homers, 85 runs batted in. is a fellow that hit the 222nd Yankee homer this year, and that ball's going up in the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. New Major League record. Pitch to the moose, curve inside, ball one. On deck, Cleet Boyle. Talking with Mike Tresh before the ball game, the son of Tom Tresh. Oh, I did it again. The pitch is lined deep to left field. That one's going to tie up the ball game. A home run for Scarron in the lower left field deck. And the ball game tied at one and one. That's the second hit off Bunny. For Scarron, his 26th home run of the year. And now to straighten out that Tresh family again, I met Mike Tresh, the father of Tom Tresh. Talk about a nervous father. Boy, he and his 
Tom hasn't played much, but he says he can't sit still just watching him in that Yankee uniform. Here's the pitch to Cleet Boyer. It's low and away ball one. Cleet batting 227, 18 doubles, 5 triples, 10 homers, 53 RBIs. Fastball hit deep to left field. Here the foul pole curving far low and back out of play, and that ball would have been plenty far enough to have been a home run. The home run for Bill Scourin, his 26th of the year, ties the best year he's ever had in the big league for home. He's 26. I had a 1-1 ball game, and 1-1 on Cleet Boyle with one out. Nobody on. Pitches a curve inside. Two balls, one strike. Here's a 2-1 pitch. On the outside corner, 2-2. Two and two. He's ready again. His pitch to Boyer is a curve, strike three, swinging. He pulls Cleet on that one for a second strikeout. And it'll bring up the Yankee pitcher, Bill Stafford. Bill batting 186, two doubles, one triple, three RBIs. Nobody on. Pitch to Stafford is outside, ball one. The pitch is popped in the air. The second baseman, Jake Ward, is calling for it. And takes it for the third out. Well, the Yankees tie it up. One run on one hit, the homer by Scar, and no tag errors. Nobody left. At the end of an inning and a half, it's New York one and Detroit one. Use Atlantic Imperial in your car. It's the quality gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Leading off for Detroit here in the bottom of the second inning, Jake Wood, their second baseman. Jake batting 251, 16 doubles, 12 triples, 11 homers, 60 runs batted in, 29 stolen bases. Right hand hitter. Tap his curve is over. Strike one call. Tap his next pitch curve popped in the air to the right side. Bobby Richardson. Kubek coming over and casing. He's helped from the sun, but Bobby takes it. That's one out, and here's Jim Bunny. Running, batting 138. One double, four runs batted in. Ball game side, 1-1, one, one, the last of the second. Curve hit to deep left center field. Way back there, Mantle going back. Still going back and makes a backhand catch in front of the wall in deep left center. Right by the 400-foot sign. Running, hit one. Nine miles out there in deep left center. And Mantle made a fine catch. He was playing in for Bunning, had to go back a long ways and backhanded it right against the fence. So that's two away. And here's Dick McCullough, who single the center and scored the Tigers' run. Left hand hitter. Curve to McCullough is over. Strike one call. That time Stafford came in directly overhand. Billy Bruton on deck. Curveball hit on the ground. Richardson, who was right at second base, up with it. Flips to Scourin in time to get McCullough. Tigers get down in order in the bottom of the second. Nothing across at the end of two full innings. The Yankees won and Detroit won. Fans, when you're on the go, try Atlantic Imperial and the clean carburetor test. Well, as we told you, the Yankees leave here. Tomorrow, on their off day, fly to Baltimore and play a twinight a Tuesday, a night game Wednesday, a night game Thursday, and then off, to an off day on Friday, play the Red Sox in Fenway Park Saturday and Sunday afternoon. And then after an off day on September the 25th, my birthday, they'll play Baltimore 
Tuesday night at home and Wednesday afternoon a ladies day and the final three games against the Red Sox Friday night Saturday and Sunday all right here's Bobby Richardson who beat out a bunt in the first inning he takes the strike over matter of fact Bobby bunted with two strikes on him strike pitch. Here's a ground ball. Nice play by Boros on a leap. The throw to first in time for the out. Boros timed that bouncing ball beautifully as Richardson chopped it into the ground. High over Boros' head, but Steve leaped tight, gloved it one-handed, and rifled the throw to first to Nip Richardson. That's one away. Here's Kubek the batter, and here come the photographers. Boy, they have snapped more film here in this series. When Roger Maris has come to plate, and I've seen all year, here's the pitch to Kubek. He takes it as he bluffs the butt ball one. Tony Fly to center in the first inning. All sizes, all shapes of cameras. One nothing pitch. Foul tip held by Brown. One and one. One of the photographers got an interesting picture of Maris with Kubek at bat, and Kubek was straddling in the batter's box, as he is right now, swinging the bat back and forth. He shot right between Kubek's legs and got Maris, who was kneeling on deck. It was a pretty nice picture. There's a foul that's drifting out of play down the left field line, back into the seats. One ball, two strikes. Wind up and the pitch is outside, two and two. All right, Bunning with that big, slow, easy wind up. His pitch is high, ball three. Full count, three and two on Kubek. All right, Bunning ready again. It's high for ball four. Kubek walks. Second walk given up by Bunning, and here's Roger Maris, who got the other walk in the first inning. Joe Cooper counts 11 of them on the field. Boy, what a mob scene. Kubek leading away. Pitch to Roger. Curve outside, ball two. Two and nothing. Two and nothing on Maris. Here's the stretch. The pitch is fouled back. Boy, he had a good cut of that one. They take pictures of every time a pitch is thrown to Maris. Whether he swings at it or not, they're ready. Two balls, one strike, and one out. Pitch is high, ball three, three and one. Just hope Maris doesn't slice a foul off the end of his bat to the left of the plate. Photographers wouldn't have a chance to get out of the way. Here's the stretch. The pitch is hit deep to right, but serving foul. Oh, man, he got a hold of that one way back in the upper deck. Almost at number 58. It brings up Mickey Mantle, who bounced into a fourth play in the first inning. 1-1 one, one the score with two outs, top of the third. Kubek at first. Mantle the batter and Bear on deck. Stretch and a pitch to Mickey. High ball one. Kubek leading away. Pitch to Mickey is a curve over strike one call. One and one. Stretch by Bunny. Pitch to Mantle. Almost hit him. Ball two. And Mantle is pointing his finger at Bunny, and he is not happy. Mickey Mantle was brushed back by a fastball, and he's still talking with Bunny out there. Bunny and 
ground had huddled just before that pitch. And Mandel still gone. Two balls, one strike. Boy, that shook the crowd up a little bit, too. Here's his stretch. And his curve is outside ball three. Three and one. The first time I've ever seen Mantle get mad at an opposing pitcher. I've seen him get mad at himself quite often. Here's the stretch. Fastball. Outside ball four. That's the third walk given up by Bunny. And it brings up Yogi, who was called out on strikes in the first inning. Kubek at second, Mandel at first. All right, here's the stretch by Bunny. Pitch to Yogi, a ground foul down by the Yankee bullpen. Strike one, one-one ball game in the top of the third with two out and two on. Johnny Blanchett on deck. Running in the stretch position. Pitch inside, one and one. Now Bunning sets. His curve is over, strike two. Same pitch that Yogi was called out on his first time at that. Now for the one ball, two strike pitch. Fastball, strike three, swinging. He foul tipped it, but Brown held on to it. Four strikeouts for Bunning for the Yankees in the top of the third. No runs, no hits, no Tiger errors. Two men left at the end of two and a half. Yankees one and Detroit one. Today, more and more motorists are enjoying better engine performance thanks to Atlantic Imperial gasoline. But now you can try Atlantic Imperial in your own car without risking an extra penny. How? With Atlantic's 100-gallon clean carburetor test. Every time you buy Atlantic Imperial, get a receipt from your dealer. After 100 gallons, if you're not satisfied with generally better engine performance, return those receipts to Atlantic. They'll send you the difference in cost between 100 gallons of Atlantic Imperial and regular gasoline. No questions asked. Start using Atlantic Imperial gasoline today. We're ready to go here in the bottom of the third inning. Billy Bruton leading off. Bruton popped up to third base in the first inning. The wind up in the change of paces. Popped in the air again. And Cleet Boyer moving in front of Kubek at shortstop. Under it and takes it for the first out. So that's twice that Bruton has popped up to Cleet Boyer. And it brings up Al Kaline, who also popped to Boyer in the first inning. On deck, Rocky Colavito. Ball game tied at 1-1. Bill Stafford into the windup. Side on curve is over. Strike call. Stafford comes back with a changeup, low and away. 1-1. One one. Stafford ready. The 1-1 one one delivery. Curve ball line to left field, and that K-line's got another base hit. Man, he has been hitting Yankee pitching. A line single to left field for K-Line. That's K-Line's eighth hit in this series. And it brings up Rocky Colavito, who lined a single to right field in the first inning. One out, Scarron holding first against K-Line. Ball game tied 1-1. On deck, Norm Cash. This is the meat of the Tigers' batting order. K-Line, Colavito, and Cash. The curve to Rocky is high, ball one. Leading away. Baffert's fastball line is center field, a base hit. A line must hold at second base. He's going to go to third. Here's the throw coming in. He slides and he's safe. And Boyer arguing, and Kubek now comes over to argue. Mantle bobbled the ball momentarily. K line hesitated and then seemed in the third, but looks like K line has hurt his ankle. He slid a little late into the bag. And Mantle's going to be charged with an error. But it looks like K-Line could have hurt himself pretty bad. He slid late into third base, jamming his left ankle into the bag. 
And time is called. So it's a single for Colavito. Mantle is charged with an error. Rocky went to second base on the play. And now the Tigers have runners at second and third with one out. And the batter, Norm Cash. K-line now is walking around on the ankle. And it looks like it's not quite as bad as he thought it was when he first slid in there. All right, K-line is all right. You get that first, the initial shot when sliding into a bag. Those bags don't give. K-line at third and Colavito at second. And here's Norm Cash, who single drove in the Tigers run in the first inning. On deck, Steve Boros. Only one away. Al Renniff is up in the Yankee bullpen. They're going to walk Cash intentionally and pitch to Steve Boros. And listen to the crowd. Cash having a great year. And the Yankees respect him, so Ralph Hobb wants Stafford to walk him. Cash is batting 361 with 37 homers and 123 runs batted in. All right, Cash gets the intentional pass, and the bases are loaded again. Brings up Steve Boros, who walked in the first inning. He's only one away. Yankee infield back in double play depth. Time is called. Cleet Boyer at third base. Having a little trouble with his thumb. He might have jammed his thumb tagging Al Kaline. And here comes Gus Marsh, the Yankee trainer, out. And while Gus is out there looking at Boyer, and it looks like Boyer's pants are ripped, too. He might have a little spike on the knee. Here comes Ralph Hauk. We're going to have a few words with Mike Trick, the father of Tom Trick. Mike, I've been calling him your father and you his son. I'm all mixed up, but I imagine you're even more nervous than... Uh, I've been on the air with your boy playing big league ball. How about it? I sure, I sure am nervous, Bill. I'd like to see him get in the game. I'd probably pass <laughs> out. I think you would. You can't <laughs> sit still while him while he's sitting on the bench. If he gets in, you're really liable to get in. I together. sure am. I I uh, I don't know. I felt this way the last three games. Of course, I think I'd better just walk him on television. <laughs> well, Mike, how many years did you play in the big league? Yourself? Twelve years, Bill. Oh, you didn't. Uh, catching for the White Sox all that time? Well, 11 years with the White Sox and one year with uh, Cleveland. Well, it must be a big thrill to have a boy finally make the big league. Yeah. It sure is. Thank you, Phil. Wonderful. Something I'm looking forward to, but if I think that if it affected me the way it does you, I'll make Scooter a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Phil. I appreciate it. I'd rather be nervous here, though, than be nervous when he's down there. <laughs> well, thanks. That's Mike Tresh. Tom Tresh is dead. Quite a ball player in his day. Now we're ready to go. The bases are loaded with one out. And here's the first pitch to Steve Boros. He takes it inside and low ball one. Renniff is loosening up in the Yankee bullpen. Court side 1-1, one, one, but the Tigers are threatening. There's a pitch inside, ball 2, 2-0. Two Dick Brown on deck. A 2-0 pitch right down the middle strike call. Two more. Stafford checks the sign from Blanchard. Shakes one sign off, another one. Now he's ready. The wind-up. Curve outside, ball three. Three and one on Boris. Stafford in a tough spot here. A three-one count, the base is loaded, and one out. Here's the pitch. Curve outside, ball four, and it forces in a run. Get credit for an RBI as K line comes across the score. The Tigers lead two to one. The bases are still loaded with one out, and here's Dick Brown, the catcher, who fly deep to left field in the first inning. Stafford, who usually has excellent control, walked in a run. Bill. Uh, had only walked 49 men before today in 169 and two-third innings of pitching. All right, we're ready to go. The bases are still loaded. 
Boros at first, Cash at second, Colavito at third. Here's the first pitch to Brown. Side on fifth, will hit on the ground, and short, Kubek to Richardson for one, back to first, double play. And the Yankees come up with another double play in the clutch, their 169th of the year. They get Stafford out of further trouble, but Detroit picks up one run on two hits, one Yankee error, two men left, and at the end of three innings, it's Detroit two and the Yankees one. Say, Mike, I want to ask you one more question about your son, Tom. I think it was an interesting story on how you got him to become a switch hitter. I think a lot of the kids and parents listening in might want to try that with their boys, seeing how switch hitting is so successful. Well, being around ballparks all the time, I bought one of those little midget bats that you used to get at the ballpark, and I had a rubber ball, and he just, uh, when he was about three, four years old, I just uh, had him throw the ball up and hit it, and, uh, and he got so that he started swinging both ways, right-handed with a, you know, the bat with one hand, and uh-huh. then the bat with the other hand. Doing both ways? Well, evidently it did later on, uh, because then I started throwing to him, and uh, as he grew older, why well, I kept throwing to him, and that's the way it happened, Bill. I think it pays off, Mike. Switch hitting is a big advantage. All right, Johnny Blanchard is up there now. Blanchard lined to right field in the second inning. Here's Bunning's pitch to Blanchard. He swings and grounds it foul pass first down the right field corner. Tigers two, and the Yankees one here in the top of the fourth. This is the Yankees' last appearance here in Tiger Stadium this year. Big wind-up by Bunny. Fastball popped in the air outside first base. Norm Cash in foul territory is under it and takes it for the out. Blanchett fouls out the catch. One out, and here's the moose. Pitch to Scar and hits him a side-arm curve. Hit him softly. If you're going to get hit, that's the kind of pitch to get hit with. Moose takes first base. And the batter will be Cleet Boyer. Cleet struck out swinging in the second inning. Stretch by Bunny. Curve in the dirt, knocked down by Brown. One ball, no strike. Norm Cash holding first against Scarlett. Bunning sets. Pitch is low and away, ball two. Two and nothing. Bunning throws a lot of pitches in a ball game. He's not a fellow with real sharp control. Fastball hit deep to left. That one's gone. That's way back in there. In the upper deck, a home run for Boyer. So Cleet Boyer really got a hold of one and lined it in the upper deck. And for Boyer, that's his 11th home of the year. Gives him 55 runs. Batted in, and the Yankees take a 3-2 to two lead here in the top of the fourth. And it brings up Bill Stafford. Had to wait for Moose to get in. They both use the same helmet. Two home runs for the Yankees in the ball game. Pitch to Stafford. Foul back, strike one, and Stafford was going for the downs on that swing. That was Boyer's third home run off Detroit pitching. He hit one off Foytack and one off Ronnie Klein and now one off Bunny. There's a swing and a miss by Stafford. Strike two. Last year, Boyer had 14 home runs. One out, nobody on. Curve popped in the air. Dick McAuliffe and Jake Wood calling for it. And now Wood yells the loudest and makes the catch as McAuliffe steps away. That's two away, and here's Bobby Richardson. Beat out a bunt with two strikes on him in the first inning, and then bounced out to third in the third inning. Bunnings fastball popped in the air outside first. Norm Cash shading his eyes in foul territory. Takes it for the third out. But the Yankees come up with two runs on one base at the home of Iboya. No Tiger errors and nobody left. And at the end of three and a half, it's the Yankees three and the Tigers two. That new power mower sure looks easy to operate, Dorn. Yeah. Wish our car performed half as well. Huh? What's the trouble? Oh, I don't like a vibrating machine. Stalls all over the place. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Your car the same way? Uh, it used to be. Turned out the carburetor was full of dirt. Oh? What did you do? Cleaned it, of course. 
Say, that must have been a big job. Uh-huh, nothing to it. I just started using Atlantic Imperial gasoline. What's that got to do with it? Hey, where have you been? I thought everybody knew by now that Atlantic Imperial gasoline cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Atlantic Imperial. And it worked for you? It worked for me. Boy, I'll have to start using Atlantic Imperial gasoline right away. Meanwhile, back to the grass. <laughs> That's one problem Atlantic Imperial can't solve. Leading off of Detroit in the bottom of the fourth, Jake Wood, who popped up to second base in the second inning. Yankees three and the Tigers two. Bill Stafford on the mound for the Yankees. His first pitch to Wood is a curve. It's in there, strike one call. Stafford's one strike pitch fastball in there, strike two call. Nothing and two. Now the two strike pitch. High ball one. Yankee outfield plays wood deep. He's got good power. One ball, two strike pitch. is lying on the ground right at Kubek, though. Nice play by Tony on a bad hop. His throw in time. Ball took a wicked hop at the last second. One way, here's Jim Bunning, who fly deep to left center field. Mantle made a fine catch going back in front of the wall. On deck, Dick McCullough. Pitch to Bunning. Looked like that flancher was crossed up a little bit that time on a fastball that was in there for a strike. Bunning wants the umpire to look at the ball. And he's going to throw it out of play. Ball did something because it pulled Blanchett. It never did hit his glove. It hit his shin guard. Stafford ready. The one strike pitch is low and away. Ball one. One and one. One out, nobody on. One one count on Bunny. Pitch, low ball two, two and one. Stafford's next pitch is foul back off the screen. Two and two on Bunny. Pitch is a curve over strike three call. That's the first strikeout for Stafford today. Brings up Dick McAuliffe, who singled the center and scored, then bounced to second base. Billy Bruton on deck. Pitch to McAuliffe, curve low inside, ball one. Sun shining brightly here in Detroit. Change up, hit out in the short center field, and dropping in there for a base hit. He hit it off the end of the bat. Now call it second base hit, and the fifth hit off Stafford. Sixth hit off Stafford. Brings up Billy Bruton, hop to third twice. Two out, the Yankees lead 3-2, last of the fourth. Fastball hit on the ground, Richardson to his left, up with it, flips off balance to Scarron. They got him. For Detroit, in the bottom of the fourth, no runs, one hit, no Yankee errors, one man left. At the end of four, it's the Yankees three, the Tigers two. Right now, I'd like to mention that the second half of this game is being brought to you by the crisp refresher, Valentine Beer. All right, Tony Kubek, fly to center and walk. Bunny's first pitch is popped in the air to short left field. McAuliffe back, Calavito in. McAuliffe calling for it. Now Rocky, and Rocky makes the catch. Roger Maris, who walked and struck out. One out, nobody on. Bunnings wind up and pitch to Maris. Is outside and gets away from Brown, rolls back to the screen. Ball one. It's amazing. One second you look down on the field, it's clear. Next second you look down and those 11 photographers are out again. 
Curve inside, ball two, two and nothing. Two nothing set. It's as bad as he ducks out of the way. Strike one, two and one. All right, the big wind up by Bunny. Curve is full foul, pass first, down the right field corner. Two on Rogers. One out and nobody on. The Yankees leading 3-2. This is the top of the fifth. Change up is high. Ball three. And Maris was way out in front. He already taken his step at the bat back. Good motion by Bunny on that pick. Full count on Maris. Now the payoff pick. Inside, ball four. He walked him. Second time Maris has walked. And the fourth walk given up by Bunny. Brings up Mickey Mantle, who bounced into a fourth play and then walked. And the last time Mantle was up there, he was not too happy with one of Bunny's serves that came a little tight. Maris at first was one out. A stretch. Pitch to Mickey. Inside, ball one. Pitch to Mickey is low inside, ball two. Two and nothing. On deck, Yogi Berra. Stretch by Bunning. His pitch is on the outside corner strike call. Two and one. leading away. The 2-1 pitch is fouled back off the screen. 2-2. Two and two. Swing and a miss strike three. He got him on a low fastball. Five strikeouts for Bunny. Brings up Yogi, who has been up twice, struck out both times. Called out and swinging. 3-2, the Yankees lead with two out in the top of the fifth. Maris at first. On deck, Johnny Blanchett. Pitch to Yogi, swing and a miss at a slow curve, strike one. Another changeup pops in the air. He had Yogi way out in front. K-Line is coming in, shading his eyes with the glasses down, takes it. So Bunning had the Yankee hitters off balance that inning. No runs, no hits, no Tiger errors. One man left at the end of four and a half. Yankees three, Detroit two. Gives you six icy cold cans of the crisp refresher. All right, Al K line leading off of the Tigers here in the bottom of the fifth. Al popped the third, single to left, he scored once. Stafford ready, his pitch to K line is high and away ball one. K line in this series has eight hits in 12 at bats. Pitch line to center field and another base hit for K-Line. Oh, man, this is one of the hottest streaks we've seen. K-Line limps down to first base. Boy, he is stroking that ball. Seven hits off Stafford. And that is K-Line's ninth hit in this series. And Louis Arroyo gets up in the Yankee bullpen. Here's Colavito to bat a two for two. Single to right, single to center. 
lead three to two. Stretched by Stafford. Hits to Rocky. Pops in the air to straight away center, but Mantle is right there and takes it for the out. That's one away, and it brings up Norm Cash, who's singled and walked. Cash has driven in one run. Steve Boros on deck. K-line at first. Here's the stretch. Six to kick. It's deep to right there. It goes. A line drive into the... Oh, there's a screen out there. It hit off the screen. They got tagged between first and second to throw. Not in time. I forgot about that screen out in right field. Just above the lower deck. A line drive off the screen. And Cash is in the second base as Maris fielded the ball off the screen through the first. As Cash rounded first, he was hung up, had to go to second. Scowen's throw was low, and the Tigers have runners at second and third. A single for Cash, he went to second on the throw. Boros takes a strike on the outside corner. The Yankees leading 3-2. One strike on Steve Boros. Wind up. Curve inside. One and one. Dick Brown on deck. I had completely forgotten about that screen that they put up in right field this year here at Tiger Stadium. Right, the curve caught the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. And it doesn't go all the way across. It goes from the foul line, just out two and a half sections. One ball, two strikes. A tying run at third. Is outside two and two. Now the wind up, the two two pitch, outside ball three, full count. And at the end of five, 
It's the Yankees three and Detroit two. On the scoreboard in the American League, it's the White Sox eight and the Angels one at the end of four and a half. Al Smith hit a home in the fourth with the bases loaded. That's the 42nd Grand Slam of the year. Not for Al Smith, but for players in the American League and National League. The National League, Philly three, Cincinnati nothing at the end of five and a half. Cardinals three, Pittsburgh nothing at the end of eight. Chicago at San Francisco, Milwaukee at Los Angeles has not started. For the Yankees, Johnny Blanchard leads off. Line to right, pops to first. Here's the wind-up by Bunny. The pitch to Blanchard is a check swing and a slow, ball one. Nothing fastball, full foul outside of first. One and one. back off the screen. One ball, two strikes. Curve strike, three swing. Was low and away, and that's the sixth strikeout for Bunny. Brings up Bill Scowen, who homered and was hit by a pitch ball. On deck, Cleet Boyer. Bunny's curve is a strike. Moose checked the swing, but it was over. One strike pitch inside, one and one. Moose was thrust back. By the way, that bases loaded homer by Al Smith was a 42nd home run hit by an American League player. Does not include the Grand Slammers in the National League. Every time one is hit, it's a new record in the American League. There's a high foul going back on top of the roof. Straight up there. A lot of times they roll back off the slanty roof here. One ball, two strikes. Running into the windup. Curve strike, three swinging. Seven strikeouts for Bunning. And here's Cleet Boyle, who struck out and then hit a two run homer in the fourth inning in the upper deck. Homer put the Yankees ahead, three to two. Two out, nobody on. Pitch the boy hit high in the air to center field. Billy Bruton moving under it. And Bruton's got it for the third out. So the Yankees get down in order. In the top of the six, nothing across. And at the end of five and a half, it's still New York three, Detroit two. Jake Wood leads it off for Detroit here in the bottom of the six. Jake pops to second and bounce to the shortstop. has had three rough innings. He's had the bases loaded in the first, the third, and the fifth. But he got out of two of them with a help of double plays by the Yankee infield. There's a high foul. Lee Boyer is coming over in foul territory. He's under it and takes it for the first out. One away, here's Jim Bunning. Fly deep to left center and was called out on strike. Pitch to Bunning is a strike on the outside corner. Foul off the end of the bat. Nothing in two. The 
One strike pitch. Strike three call. Second time that Bunning has struck out, and that's the only two strikeouts by Bill Stafford today. Brings up Dick McCullough, who's two for three. Single to center twice. He scored once and bounced out to second base. On deck, Billy Bruton. Curve. Hit in the air to right field. Now it's going back. And takes it against the screen. He caught that ball just as he bumped into the wall, reaching as high as he could. A fine play by Maris, taking a double away from McCullough. Four destroyed in the bottom of the six. No runs, no hits, no Yankee errors. Nobody left. And now at the end of six full innings, it's the Yankees' three runs on just three base hits. One error, Detroit two runs on eight hits and no errors. But of the three Yankee base hits, two of them are homers, one by Scourin in the second inning and one by Boyer in the fourth inning with Scourin on base. So that's the difference in the ball game, the long ball. Mel Allen will be coming over to carry you the rest of the way right after we pause for station identification. At 1460 on the radio dial, you're in tune with Quality Modern, WOKO, Albany, New York. Good sound broadcasting for 1961. 425. Hello there, everybody, in the seventh inning. Bill Stafford leads off in New York. Jim Bunning working. And the pitch. In there for a strike. New York leading 3-2. So often you switch over from television. For six innings come over to the radio. You sit and watch a while until you get in a descriptive mood. Here's the pitch. Swung on it. Foul back. Strike two. Nothing in two. You catch yourself sitting back waiting for something to happen and then go with instead of going into the detail. No balls. Two strikes. Stafford popped out the second twice in the second and fourth inning. Jim Bunning swings into the windup. In comes the pitch, swung on, and hits foul beyond first out of play. No balls, two strikes. Now the windup and the two strike pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Seven strikeouts for Bunning. Eight strikeouts as we double check. Here's Bobby Richardson. Beat out of bunt in the first inning, grounded to third, foul to first. Jim Bunning's delivery swung on to pop up to short. Six McCallum getting under it. Two away. Yanks haven't done much with Bunning. Three hits. Two of them happen to be homers. Scarron in the second, and he was hit by Pitchfall in the fourth, and Boyer homered. He has done a magnificent job of really stopping the left-hand batter, which is supposed to be the weakness in his armor. Here's Kubek, fly to center, walk, fly to left. Running pitch is swung on, grounded first up to Cash. Cash tried to come up with it and couldn't. Kaline whips the throw into McCullough. So Kubek singles to right, and up comes Marek. Walk, struck out, and walk. Now 
the pitch. It's low and inside. Ball one. One and one.
nothing delivery. And inside, ball two. A two nothing count on Colavito. to the wind up the pitch and it is outside ball three. Three nothing delivery. Then there's track one, fastball, three and one. Stafford checking with Blanchard. Colavito digs in the wind up and the 3 1 pitch. Swung on line down the left field line. Foul over the Tiger bullpen. Strike two. Full count. Bill Cavaretta slaps his hands together down that third. Dollars up to Rocky. continues to heat up. Two down the seventh, four to two New York. Here's the payoff pitch to Colavito, and it's outside, ball four. And that brings up Norm Cash. Five walks given up by Stafford, one intentional. Single to center, it was purposely passed and singled off the right field screen. He's got his eye on Stafford's uh, offering. The league leading hitter up there, the man to qualify for it, hitting 363. And the pitch swung on, hit sharply to second, one hop. Richardson throws to Scourin in time, and the side is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on, to end of seven innings. New York, four runs, five hits. One error, six left on. The Tigers, two runs, eight hits, no errors, and nine men left on. Have you heard the jolly six-pack jingle? Well, when you do, that's your cue to take along a six-pack of Valentine beer. Take more because nothing refreshes like the crisp refresher in six-packs. Elsewhere in the American League, Chicago 8, Los Angeles 1, and a 6.5 in the first game. Minnesota shot out Cleveland 5-0, Pasquale doing the job, beating Terry Alzabelli homer. Stroll and Grant will be the pitchers in the second game. Boston shut out Baltimore 1-0 as Mon Bouquet pitched a three-hitter, beat Estrada. And Kansas City beat Washington 3-2, Krause beat May Street, Bryant, homer. In the National League, Philadelphia 3, Cincinnati nothing, end of seven. St. Louis shut out Pittsburgh 3-0, Jackson beat McBean, Musial hit a two-run homer. San Francisco 3, Chicago nothing, end of 2. Milwaukee, Los Angeles later. Yogi Berra leads off in the 8th inning. Jim Bunning pitch on the way. Inside, ball 1. Yogi struck out twice and slide to right. into the wind-up and the pitch to Yoke is a change of pace that hits the plate. Two balls, no strike. Roland Sheldon loosening up in the New York bullpen now. Blanchard on deck and Scourin to follow. Two-nothing delivery. Swung on. 
Hit up in the air to left field. Calavito is chasing it, digging hard, coming on, and makes a great backhand pass to the ball. Inside the foul line, Rob Barrow of a double. Boy, the Tigers have certainly given Bunning some great support today afield. They have made spectacular plays throughout this series defensively. Truly spectacular. Here's Johnny Blanchard. The pitch swung on and popped up to second. Jake Woods under it. One, two away. Blanchard had lined to right, fouled the first and struck out. Two down, and up comes the loose, who is homered, was hit by pitfall, and struck out. A great play by Colavito. Good play. You don't know what's going to happen. It might be a play to change the game around. Here's the pitch to the moose. Inside, ball one. Paid attendance today, 44,219. Bunnings, one nothing pitch to Scarron. Over, strike one, one and one. 44,219. Total for the three days, 126,306. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch to Moose. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Went for a low curve, breaking away. Now the 1-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three, and the sides retire. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. Then it's seven and a half innings. Yankees four and the Tigers two. Valentine delivers a funny, mellow taste that really refreshes. Since people know quality when they taste it, over five million glasses of Valentine beer are enjoyed every day. So clap your hands, clap your feet, snap your fingers, turn back the man for Valentine. The crisp refreshes. Valentine, Valentine beer. Since 1840, America's finest. In the last half of the eighth inning, Steve Burrows comes up, Dick Brown on deck, and Jake Wood to follow. Arroyo gets up again for New York. Terry Fox warming up for the Tigers. Anyone gets on, of course, uh, stepping a pinch hit for Bunning. Charlie Maxwell, in fact, is out to pinch hit for Brown. So here's Burrows up. He's walked three times. And the pitch. High and away, ball one. the delivery. Swung on to a high fly ball in the center. Mantle waiting for it and takes it. One away. Charlie Maxwell will hit for Dick Brown. Jake Wood on deck.
Charlie Maxwell, a left-hand batter, steps in. Batting for Brown. Stafford's pitch on the way is low. Ball one. Four to two, New York, last of the eight. Stafford uh, starts the windup, then stops, and Maxwell asks for time. Back in hitting position. The windup, here's the delivery. Change up is swung on line into right field for a base hit. On his way for a double. Charlie Maxwell gets a pinch hit double for Dick Brown. Threw him a change of pace and he lined it into the right field corner. And Vic Wirtz is out on deck to hit for punning. Meantime, Jake Wood is up. Whether or not Wirtz will hit depends on what uh, Wood does. He may have uh, worked it anyway. So Bob Sheffing is sending up his guns here now in the last three eighth inning. He's got guns coming up in the ninth. He needs them. Maxwell on second. One out and Jake Wood up. Here's the pitch. Inside, ball one. the pitch, swung on, a ground ball, hit back through the middle into center for a base hit. Maxwell rounds third, comes on in to score, and it's four to three. And out of the dugout now comes Ralph House. With Vic Wirtz coming up. Jake Wood, who had been uh, blanked in his first three trips, singles to center to score Maxwell. And Arroyo's coming in. Bill Stafford went seven of the third inning. Giving up ten hits, walked five, struck out two, been charged with three runs, is responsible for Wood. And uh, Wirtz, who's not yet been announced, is being called back. And Bubba Morton will hit for Bunny. Since Wirtz had not yet been announced, of course, the only thing that could have happened is uh, Ralph might have waited until Sheffing made his move. If he'd announced Wirtz, then he could have brought in Arroyo, and then uh, could have made the switch. up we pause for station identification good sound broadcasting for 1961 this is quality modern woko albany new york where you always hear the very best of everything your yankee baseball station the time six minutes before 5 p.m bubba morton the right hand batter Steps in, Wood on first, one out, and the pitch, outside, ball one. Morton, bats him right-handed. Wood's real fast, remember. And the pitch, it's low and inside, ball two. And the Tigers have Jerry Fox in the bullpen. He has been just great in relief. So you might say this is the ball game right here. Now the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one, two and one. Other than going into the last of the ninth. 
Wood leads away from first. And the 2 1 pitch is in there. Strike two to two. Now the pitch. It's inside. Ball three. Three and two. Full count. Tigers will have Terry Fox pitching, Mike Roark back to the plate. Jim Bunning went eight innings, allowed five hits, walked two, struck out eight, gave up four runs. Now Terry Fox comes on in the ninth. He's a great relief pitcher. He's allowed, he has an earned run average of 1.29. He's the saver. Worked 48 and two-thirds innings. Walked nine, struck out 28. And just giving up seven runs. Boyer struck out, homered and flied to center. Terry Fox, the curveball specialist, ready to work, the right-hander, into the windup, and the pitch swung on and popped up to second. Jake Wood under it, one away. come up to bat. Young Terry Fox who came out of the Braves organization. Into the windup. And the pitch to Arroyo. Swung on. The bouncer down to Cash. Steps on first. There two away. Two pitches, two out. He had not work hard. Now Bobby Richardson. Beat out a bunt. Grounded to third. Fouled out to first and popped to short. 4-4, four, four, it's the ninth inning. Mossy's loosening up in the Tiger bullpen. Fox into the windup and the pitch to Bobby. Swung on and it's a pop-up. And McCullough chasing it, can't get it. The base hit. Bobby 
And there is Brown back at first base. And no throw. Bobby had trailed Cash all the way down. Suddenly, Dick Brown came uh, racing down to first behind Bobby and Moses Howard get back. Richardson hit a pop-up. It had overspin and kept traveling into short center. Brings up Kubek, who fly to center, walk, fly to left, and single to right. Box pitching to Kubek. There goes Bobby. The pitch is taken. The throw down is in plenty of time. Richardson's out stealing. McCullough taking the throw. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on. And at the end of eight and a half innings, it is Yankees four, Tigers four. Ninth inning, 4-4, and Billy Bruton up. The wind-up by Arroyo, here's the pitch, and Bruton swings and sends a fly ball into right center. Mantle goes over, under it, and makes the catch. One away. Now Al Kaline, who's at two for four, with Calavito to follow. Inside, ball one. Four, four, last of the ninth. K line will be a ripping, so will uh, Rocky if K line doesn't get it. The wind up and the pitch. Inside ball two, two and nothing. And the two nothing delivery. Outside ball three, three nothing. Nothing pitch to K line. He's on ball four. And Rocky Colavito coming up. Norm Cash on deck. Short side four all. Colavito's had two singles, fly to center and walk. K line with his lead. And the pitch. Swung on, hit sharply by third, and let's see for a base hit. K-line stops at second. So the Tigers have runners on first and second. One out. And Norm Cash coming up. Single to center, walk, single to right, and grounded to second. Arroyo's trying to get Rocky to hit on the ground. He did, but he hit it in the hole. And so the Tigers have them on there with one out in the ninth and cash up and Burroughs to follow if needed. A 4-4 ball game. Norm Cash at bat, the league's leading hitter. Arroyo to the stretch and the pitch swung on in missed strike one. Got speed on second base. Arroyo to the stretch. The pitch to Cash. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Nothing and two. Screwball. Ball 
balls, two strikes. K-line off second, Colavito off first. Here's the pitch, and Cash swings and misses. Strike three. Now up comes Dick Burroughs. Or Steve Burroughs. Walk three times, fly into center. Arroyo into the stretch, and the pitch. Low outside, ball one. Two outs in the ninth, 4-4 four, four the score. K-line on second, Colavito on first. Arroyo into the stretch. Here's the pitch. And it's in there, strike one, one and one. Louis to the stretch again, the runners lead away. He pitched to Burroughs, and it's inside, ball two, two and one. Digs in, runners lead away, and the pitch, it's outside, ball three, screwball missed, three and one. Mike Rourke is the on-deck man. Three balls, one strike. The runners lead away from first and second, the pitch is inside, ball four, and they're loaded up. K-line to third, Colavito to second, Burroughs to first, and the batter is Mike Rourke. The only way we can go any further is with an out. Mike Rourke up, right-hand batter. Anything but an out, it's all over. 4-4, four, four, last of the night. Arroyo to the windup, and the pitch. Swung on, little tap foul. Strike one. Nothing in one. the wind up here's the pitch to Rourke outside ball one one and one K-line with a good lead off third bases are loaded Arroyo to the wind up and the pitch to the right hand batter is swung on and missed Strike two, one and two. Al Kaline wandering off third. Galavita on second. Burris on first from a stretch motion. Swung on and missed. Strike three. We go to the tenth inning. Louis Arroyo. Strikes him out. No run. One hit. No errors, and three men left on. And at the end of nine innings, it's 4-4. The Yankees, four runs. Six hits. I gave uh, no hit total there in the ninth thing. Should have given them one hit for New York. Four runs, six hits, two errors. And six left on. The Tigers, four runs, 11 hits, no errors. And 12 men left on. The Tigers' perfect play and the Yankees' imperfect play has made the difference. In the first inning, Tigers got her on, McCall at singles, and singles by Colavito and Cash. The Yankees got her on in the second on Scour and Homer. In the third inning, the Tigers went ahead. K-line single to center. Colavito hit a hard single to uh, 
center, and Kaline raced on the third. Cash walked, so did Burris, forcing a run. The Yankees went ahead in the fourth when Skarin was hit by a pitched ball and Boyer homered. That was all funny. Made it 4-2 to two in the seventh. Kubek single and Maris triple just barely missed being a homer. Mantle rocked along, went out there too. That Bruton caught near the fence. And then two in the eighth for the Tigers on pinch hitter Charlie Maxwell's double. Wood singled him home, and after two were away, he scored all the way from first on a pickoff play when the throw from Skyron to Richardson went to center field. Now the tenth inning, and Kubek is up. Swung on and hit foul down the left field line out of play. Don Mossy gets up again in the bullpen. Kubek fly to center, walk, fly to left, single to right. Maris and Mantle to follow. Terry Fox doing the pitching. The right hander into the wind up and the pitch. Fastball is right over. Strike two, nothing in two. Nothing in two, the count. Fox into the windup, and his pitch is swung on, grounded out to short, and beautifully gloved by McCullough to throw in time. Dick McCullough made a great play. He went way over to his left with a one-handed scoop and throw to retire Kubek. Four of the Tigers have played great defensive ball in this series. Play after play. Tremendous. Wood play in the first inning cost two runs. Here's Maris who walked, struck out, walked, and tripled. Fox delivers and Rod swings and sends a long fly ball into right center, which Bruton will handle. And they're two away. grounded to second. Actually, Wood took a single away from him with runners on first and third. Turned it into a force out at second. Right play right off the bat. As you look back at it now, turned this ball game around. He walked, struck out, and flied to deep right center. Two away in the tenth. Fox's pitch. In there, strike one. Nothing in one. goes to the wind-up and the pitch. It's low and inside, ball one. One and one. 4-4, four, four, it's the 10th inning. And now the 1-1 one, one delivery. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Fired it fine. the one-two pitch on the way. It's low. Ball two, two-two. Two balls, two strikes. Terry Fox all set. Into the windup. Round comes the right arm. The pitch and Mantle swings and sends a high drive. Straight up. Straight up in the air. And Wood will make the catch. Sides retired. He hit it way straight up. He didn't get distance, but he hit it a mile high. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. 
at the end of nine and a half innings, New York four and Detroit four. In the last ascent, it'll be Jake Wood, Terry Fox, and Vic McCollum. And we hope all the time it's Valentine beer at your house. Don't forget to take it home and easy to carry, easy to open six packs. Valentine beer goes over big with people bent on fun and pleasure. After all, pleasure is the purpose of the crisp refresher. Your very first swallow and each one to follow tells you that this is the beer you've been thirsting for. Today's Valentine is light and crisp and golden. The light beer with true lager flavor. All of which explains why more than five million glasses of Valentine beer are enjoyed every day. Take two or four or more pleasure pack six packs of the crisp refresher while you're pouring Valentine. Don't forget that one for yourself. Chicago beat Los Angeles 8-1 to one in the first game. Minnesota beat Cleveland 5 nothing and leads 2 to nothing. Then an inning and a half the second. Boston beat Baltimore 1 nothing. Kansas City beat Chicago 3-2. St. Louis beat Pittsburgh 3 nothing. Philadelphia 4, Cincinnati nothing, end of 8 and a half. San Francisco 6, Chicago 1, end of 4 and a half. Milwaukee nothing, Los Angeles batting in the first inning. Jake Wood leads off in the last of the tenth. Arroyo into the windup and the pitch. A little high outside, ball one. 4-4. Four, four. And the next delivery, swung on and missed, strike one, one and one. One pitch to the right-hand batter. Swung on and missed. Strike two, one and two. One ball, two strikes. Arroyo into the windup. Here's the pitch to Jake Wood. And it's in there. Caught strike three. Caught looking. Terry Fox is coming up. Taking his time, but he's on his way out of the dugout now. That's two for ten this year. Right-hand batter, Arroyo to the windup, and the pitch to Fox. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Nothing in one. The one-strike delivery is low. Ball one. One and one. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Swung on and missed. Strike two, one and two. Arroyo delivers. The ball is punted. Hard. Boyer has it. Throws to Scarron in time. So they're two away, and up comes six McCullough. Single to center, grounded to second. Single to center, fly to right, grounded to first. 
Billy Bruton on deck. McAuliffe has uh, pretty good power in this ballpark. Last attempt for all. Arroyo into the windup. In comes the pitch, and McAuliffe takes it away from him. Ball one. Nothing pitch. In there, strike one. One and one. Bruton on deck. And the one one pitch. Swung on, hit foul. Back up third out of play. Strike two. One and two. up. Here's the pitch. And it's a curve low. Ball two, two, two. Two balls, two strikes. And the two, two pitch. Swung on, it's foul down the first baseline. Count remains 2-2. Two -two. It's the screwball. Pulled it for the foul. Now the 2-2 two -two delivery. It's just outside ball three. Just missed the corner with a fastball. And the 3 2 pitch. Swung on, bounce towards second. Richardson has it, throws to Scarron, and the side is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. Ten of ten innings to play. Yankees, four runs, six hits, two errors. The Tigers, four runs, 11 hits, and no errors. We pause for station identification. At 1460 on the radio dial, you're in tune with Quality Modern. W-O-K-O, Albany, New York. Good sound broadcasting for 1961. Your Yankee baseball station. In the first half of the 11th inning... It'll be Farrah, Blanchard, and Scarron coming up. And the last of the 11, Bruton, Kaline, Colavito. Backed up by Cash. The Yankees have Farrah, Blanchard, and Scarron backed up by four years. They have run into uh, a Tartar in Terry Fox, who has uh, pitched extremely effectively against them this year and against everybody. He has been one of the surprise packages of the year for the Tigers. Yogi Berra struck out twice, flied to right and flied to left. The pitch is swung on, popped up, and foul ground off first. Cash is under it. One away. Up comes Blanchard, a line to right, foul to first, struck out, popped to second. Garner today by the left-handed hitting uh, section of the order. Now effectively the Tigers, Bunning and Fox have pitched against them. Maris had a triple. Kubek a single. The rest of them have been blank. The pitch to John is outside, ball one. up and the pitch to Blanchard is inside 
Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. the 2 nothing pitch. Swung on, there's a fly ball into right. Now K-Line getting under. And they're two away. Now coming up is Bill Scarron. Hit a home run. Hit by pitch ball. Struck out twice. Fox to the windup and the pitch is swung on and missed. Strike one. Nothing in one. Now the pitch outside for a ball. Pitch to Scarron. Low outside, ball two. Prior to today, Fox had worked four and a third innings in relief against New York without allowing a hit or a run. He only allowed one hit in two and two thirds innings in relief today. And the pitch swung on and fouled back. that in seven innings up to this point of relief pitching against the Yankees this season, he's given up just one hit. A 2-2 count on Scowron. He's got a real good curveball. He may work on him here with now. Now the wind up, the pitch. Swung on, the ground ball hit between first and second, a right field for a base hit. K-line tossing it back in. So Scourin gets the second hit. Oh, Fox. And the batter's Cleet Boyer struck out, hit a two-run homer off Bunning, fly to center and popped the second. Elston Howard is being called in from the bullpen. Hal Renup is up. in the 11th. The pitch swung on and popped foul to the left of the plate out of play. Strike one. Nothing in one the count. It's over. Good breaking pitch. Strike two. Nothing in two. No balls. Two strikes. Two outs. Eleven innings. Score tied. Four four. Terry Fox into the stretch. Here's the pitch, and it is swung on. There's a fly ball hit into left center. Bruton getting back under it and makes the catch. Side is retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. Then a ten and a half inning. Yankees four, the Tigers four. Hey, come on, six pack. Jolly, jolly, six pack. Hey, come on, six pack. A fuzzy Valentine, you'll have one pack of cheer. Valentine, Valentine, so nice. Valentine, just right. It's a great refresher, Valentine. Happy are the hands holding Valentine in hand. Hey, 
Next time, take along a six-pack, a jolly six-pack of Valentine beer. It carries with ease, cools in a breeze. And best of all, it gives you six icy cold cans of the crisp refresher. looking for anything here at him. Bunt, drag, swinging away. Here's the pitch on the way. Outside, ball one. One ball, no strike. Arroyo to the windup and the pitch to Bruton. Swung on and missed, strike one. A one-one count. Pitch to Bruton. There's low ball, two, two, and one. K line on deck. Arroyo to the wind up. Here's the pitch to the left hand batter. Swung on line in the right field for base hit. So Bruton gets on to open the 11th. And now. Bill Cavaretta comes up to talk to K-Line. And Sheffing comes up to talk to K-Line. He punted to beat it out. On the other hand, uh, I don't know what Sheffing told him. He got Colavito, Cash, Burroughs to follow. So he may just be swinging. We'll see. He shortens up, takes the strike. Nothing in one. He's been swinging a hot bat. Sheffing may gamble, have him swing. It'd be worth the gamble, I'd say that. Now the stretch, and the pitch, and he's swinging, and he grounds it foul down the third baseline. Strike two, nothing in two. No balls, two strikes. Roy over the stretch, Bruton with the lead, and the pitch. They held off at a fastball, a little high, one and two. They're sad to throw over to first, runners back. Bruton with the lead. And the pitch. Swung on as the bouncer hits the Boyer. Boyer over to Richardson for one. Back on the first. It's safe. No double play. Bruton bumps Richardson to break up the double play. Got Bruton at second. K-Line's on first and Colavito's up. Billy Bruton bumps Richardson to beat the double play. Now here's Rocky, single to right, single to center, fly to center, walks and single to left. For all, last the 11th, the pitch is swung on and missed. Strike one. A low screwball. 
Nash on deck. You got to watch Keyline. He's looking closely at Louis. Here's the pitch, and it is outside. Ball one, one and one. Cardinals beat the Giants in the football opener, 21 to 10. K-line off first. Here's the pitch, and it swung on and missed. Rocky took a real rip at that one, one and two. He got that fastball. Al Kaline on first and one out. Louis to the stretch and the pitch. Swung on it, missed. Strike three. Alavito strikes out. And here's Norm Cash. Single to center. Was purposely passed. Single to right. Grounded to second and struck out. Pitch to Cash is low. He switched his feet to try and hit the opposite field. It's a one nothing count. Of course, he might have been trying to decoy Arroyo into giving him another pitch that he can pull. Louis into the stretch. And the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one. One and one. Delivery. Swung on and missed. Strike two. One and two. One ball, two strikes. Four all. Last of the 11. K line leads away. Roy, you ready? Here's the pitch, and it swung on and missed. Strike three. And the side is retired. No run. One hit, no errors, one left on. Arroyo came on the eighth inning with one out. And uh, has struck out six men. But Mr. Fox has just been... Uh, Untouchable. The Yankees have had two singles off him. Both of them were two outs. And it'll be Arroyo, Richardson, and Kubek coming up here in the 12th inning. Chicago beat Los Angeles 8 to 1. Bauman beat Chance. Al Smith had a grand slammer, the 42nd of the year in the American League. Second game. Angels won. White Sox batting in the first inning. Moeller and Pierce. Minnesota shut out Cleveland 5 0. Pasquale beat Perry out belly homer. Second game, Minnesota leaped 2 0 in a three and a half. Schroll and Grant. Boston shut out Baltimore 1 0. Mombu Kett pitched the three hitter. Estrada the loser. Kansas City beat Washington 3 2. Krause beat Mastry. Brian Homer for Kansas City. National League, Philadelphia 4, Cincinnati 0. Uh, and the ball game is over. Happy uh, beating Perky. St. Louis shut out Pittsburgh. Three. And right now, Terry Fox pitches inside to Arroyo. Jackson meets McBean. Musia homeward one on. San Francisco seven, Chicago two. At the end of six and a half innings, Odell against Curtis, Burrow, and Elson. Philippe Ballou homeward with one on. Here's the pitch to Arroyo. Outside. Milwaukee, Los Angeles, Cortland Center, two and a half, Willie and Drysdale. Terry Fox, in relief 
Joseph of Bunning came on with the ninth inning. He delivers, and it's inside. Ball three, three nothing. Arroyo's at six for 21. Fox knows he'll be taken, so he'll just be aiming it. In the windup, and it is in there for the strike. Three and one. This one down in the middle, too. Swings to the windup and the pitch. Strike two, full count. Instead of Craven hitting it out of the park, they just fired it down in the middle. Full count on Arroyo. the wind-up and the payoff pitch. Swung on his missed strike three. Made him uh, swing at a bad pitch. On away, Bobby Richardson, who's at two for five, is the batter. Beat out a bunt in the first inning, single in the ninth. Fox's pitch, swung on, lined out the left to Calavito, and they're two away. Now Tony Kubek comes up. Slide to center, walk, slide to left, single to right, and grounded to short. That's the hardest hit ball off uh, Fox. Richardson's liner. First of the 12, 4 4. Right hander Terry Fox with the wind up and the pitch. It's outside, ball one. He's had one hit, walked once, and five trips. Swung on, ground ball hit through the middle for a base hit. Tony holds up after the big turn with a single to center. Up comes Roger Maris. Walk, struck out, walk, triple to deep right, fly to center. You know, every time he comes up, and man, all, all the photographers get up and crowd around the plate. 11 of them. Of course, it's good for a fellow to become successful that way, but I, I think crowding around the plate would... Well, in fact, I know it bothers him. Out of the corner of the eye. Two away in the 12th. Four all. Terry Fox into the stretch the pitch. It's over. Curveball got the outside corner. Strike one. The right-hander again to the stretch. And the pitch. High and inside. Ball one. One and one. Don Mossy gets up in the Tiger bullpen. And the pitch. It's over. Third ball got the outside corner. Strike one. End of the stretch. And the pitch. High and inside. Ball one. One and one. Don Mossy gets up in the Tiger bullpen. Box again to the stretch. And the pitch. High outside. Ball two. Two and one. Stretch by the right-hander. 
and the pitch. Swung on, there's the drive, hits the deep right center field. Bruton going after it. That ball is going to be in there for a home run. Number 58 for Roger Maris. Against the upper deck in deep right center. Number 58. And he makes the turn. Roger Maris routed one. 425 feet the upper deck. Number 58. With two games, three games to go. For him to tie or break the record. And here's Mantle. As Maris routed his 58th and 138 runs batted in. And it's 6-4 to four, New York. Now Terry Fox pitching to Mantle. Hi, ball one. Number 58 for Roger Maris. Starting to close in again. Now the delivery up high. Ball two. Two balls, no strike. The two-nothing delivery. Outside, ball three to make. He looks down and see if he's got a green light. Now the three-nothing pitch. It's outside, ball four, and man will walk. Up comes Yogi Berra. Struck out twice, slide to right, slide to left, and fouled out to first. Maris is one game ahead of Bruce Space now. Jerry Fox pitching to Yogi. High, ball one. Staley and a Gary up in the bullpen now for the Tigers. I'll say this, they didn't give Rod anything to pull, but he hit it to right center. He didn't pull sharply. And a 400 foot plus clock. One ball, no strike. Fox into the stretch. And the pitch to Yogi. High ball two, curve ball. Now Bob Sheffings coming out of the dugout. Johnny Stevens goes out. Find out what the Tiger skipper's decision is. Giving a Gary, anyway, a chance to throw a few more. If he wants him, that's who he wants. Hank a Gary. Gary Fox. Pitched three and two-thirds innings and allowed four hits, two of them in this inning. No one walk just now to Mantle. Struck out one, given up two runs. And Hank Gary is coming in to pitch the Yogi. And as he comes in, we'll pause for station identification. At 1460 on the radio dial, you're in tune with Quality Modern, WOKO, Albany, New York, your Yankee baseball station. Uh, Gary coming in for his 40th time this season, a record of 3-4. and four. The Minnesota Vikings are leading the Chicago Bears 37-13. to 13. Steelers uh, and uh, Dallas, let's see, it's 17-14 and three quarters in favor of Dallas. All right, here's the pitch to Barra, and it's a little high, ball three, three nothing. Johnny Blanchard on deck. And the next pitch is in there for a strike. Monteo and Regan are warming up for the Tigers. Nobody uh, loosening up for the Yankees. And the pitch is taken inside, ball four. Mantle is going to try to steal in any case. That walk is charged to Fox. When the relieving pitcher comes in, uh, Howard is going to come up and hit for Blanchard. When the relieving pitcher comes in with a count of 2 nothing, 2-1, 2-2, 3-0, 3-1, 3-2, if a base on balls is achieved by the batter, that walk is charged to the departing pitcher. 
anything else is charged or credited, as the case may be, to the relieving pitcher. Elston Howard. Times uh, called, and as Howard comes up to bat for Blanchard, Bob Sheffink making a switch. And he's bringing in a right-hander, Phil Regan. So Sheffing is moving right along. Of course, in this case, uh, Sheffing had the advantage. Ellie had to make a move. Uh, rather, uh, uh, Ralph uh, Howard had to make his move with Ellie. Earlier, though, uh, when Morton batted for punting in the eighth, uh, Ralph made his move a little too quickly. Of course, he might not have cared. Uh, I mean, I don't mean to say he wouldn't be aware of that. Of course, he would. The work was about to go up, but uh, Alec didn't wait for him to be announced. So Regan comes in to relieve uh, Aguirre. Regan with a record of 10 and 7, making his 31st appearance. Nelson Howard, batting 360. There are two away, and two men on, and two in. With two outs, Kubek single, Maris got his 58th homer. Man will walk, and Barra has walked. There are two down. Regan to the stretch, and the pitch to Howard. Swung on the fly ball, hit out into short right center. K-line coming in under it, makes the catch, and the side is retired. Two runs for New York on Maris, 58 homer following two back single. Two hits, no errors, and two left on. At the end of 11 and a half innings, New York six, Detroit four. Friends, discover the taste you've been searching for in beer, in Valentine beer. It refreshes you as only the crisp refresher can. Open up or order up an ice-cold Valentine beer. I'll tell you this, with your very first swallow, and in each one to follow, Valentine tastes sunny and mellow. That taste comes from better ingredients, better brews. So when you enjoy the crisp refresher, be assured you're enjoying the best. Valentine, America's finest since 1840. Steve Burroughs will be leading off in the last half of the 12th. Mike Roark scheduled to follow. And Jake Wood. What Bob Sheffing may use in the way of uh, bench we'll see. Al Rennep gets up in the bullpen. Elson Howard, who batted for Blanchard, goes behind the plate. Burroughs has walked four times in this game, fly to center once. Arroyo into the windup, and the pitch to Burroughs is in there for a strike. And Rick Wirtz is coming out on deck to hit for Roark. Next delivery, swung on and fouled off, strike two, nothing in two. goes to the windup and the pitch is inside for a ball one and two a one two count Royal goes to the windup and the pitch to Burroughs is high outside. Ball two, two, two. The two, two pitch. And it's low ball three, three and two. Two 
new pitch. And he's on ball four. And Burris walks for the fifth time. For the fifth time in this game. Up comes Vic Wirtz to hit for Lord. Mel Ott once walked five times in a game. But I think that was a nine inning. Here's Vic Wirtz. is the first man and that brings the tying run up. Got Jake Wood on deck. Nobody out. Arroyo already delivers and works, swings and sends a drive to deep right field. Maris racing over and grabs it. For the out. One away. down and up comes Jake Wood. Wirtz lines out to Maris made a running catch in right field. Wood popped to second, grounded to short, fouled to third, single to center and took a third strike. Pitch to Wood, swung on, bounce to Boyer. Boyer over to Richardson for one, back to first, safe. No double play, Wood too fast. They got the front runner. There was a slow bouncer to Boyer, through to Richardson to get Burroughs. But Wood can really fly and beat a double play. And here's Larry Osborne coming up. A left-hand batter to hit for Regan. up on deck. Larry Osborne coming up. Dick McCullough on deck. Larry Osborne up. Yankee six, Tigers four. It's the last of the 12th. Arroyo into the stretch. And the pitch. Swung on, bounced out towards short. Kubek has it. Stepped on second, and the ball game is over. And the Yankees win it in 12 innings. 6-4, to four, and Moose is the first one to shake the hand of Luis Arroyo. As Moose's wild throw sent the game into extra innings. And it had the effect of giving Maris another chance, and he got his 58th homer to win the ball game. No runs for the Tigers, no hits, no errors, and one man left on. And that reduces the number to two. And what turned out to be a tremendous ball game. From about the uh, eighth inning on. So while you enjoy some Ballantine beer with its sunny, mellow flavor and the crisp refresher, we'll give you the totals. The Yankees, six runs, nine hits, two errors. The Tigers, four runs, 12 hits, and no errors. The Yankees stranded nine, and the Tigers 14. Bill Stafford and Jim Bunning were the starting pitchers. Stafford went seven and a third, gave up ten hits, and four runs. Arroyo came on in the eighth with one out, with two men on, and got out of the jam. He worked out of his own jam in the ninth, where he left the bases loaded. Striking out uh, Mike uh, Rourke. And again in the 11th inning, he was in a jam, a little bit in the 12th. The Tigers uh, scored first in the first inning after uh, the Yankees almost scored. Richardson had beaten out a punt. One out, Maris walked, and then Jake Wood made the first of many spectacular defensive plays by the Tigers. Took a base hit away from Mantle with a backhand pickup of his grounder deep behind second. Flipped on to McCullough to force Maris. Richardson normally would have scored on that. Maris gone to third and set up an inning. Then the Tigers scored when McCullough singled with two outs, Calavito and Cash singled to get McCullough home. Bill Scowron hit his 26th homer in the second inning to tie it up. 
Tigers went ahead, two to one in the third. One K-line single to center. Once the third is Colavito single to center. Colavito took second on Mantle's throw, two thirds, which hit K-line. And uh, skipped. Uh, and then uh, Cash uh, walked. Uh, to uh, load the bases purposely and uh, purposely walked load the bases and Burris walked fourth in a run. The Yankees went ahead in the fourth inning with one out. Skyrim was hit by a pitch ball and Boyer homer to make it 3-2. to two. The Yankees made it 4-2 to two in the seventh on Kubek single and Maris' triple. Rod just narrowly missed the home run there as the ball hit high up on the fence. Then, in the eighth inning, came a weird situation. The Yankees leading 4-2 to two with one out. Charlie Maxwell doubled Finch hitting for Dick Brown. Scored on Jake Wood single to center. Then, with uh, two outs after uh, Royo had come in, he struck out Morton hitting for Bunning. With McAuliffe up, no, uh, Morton was up at the time. Uh, now, the 3-2 pitch. They threw over to first and caught Wood running. Scourin uh, then uh, threw the ball to second base, but threw it instead of second to center field, and Wood came all the way around to score the tying run. That sent it into overtime. And in the 12th inning, Kubek singled with two outs, and Roger Maris caught at his 58th home run, putting him one game ahead of Ruth. And so there are three to go for the 154 mark, two in Baltimore Tuesday night, and one uh, Wednesday night. Well, that winds up another Valentine baseball broadcast. Now, this is Bob Delaney saying that's all for now from the Atlantic Refining Company and your Atlantic dealer who offer you Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. And P. Valentine and Sons, brewers of the crisp refresher Valentine beer. Enjoy sunny, mellow Valentine beer along with baseball.